<laughs> Welcome to my channel, I'm Ads. I bet you're thinking to yourself, there's absolutely no way that anyone can make a correlation between Dr. Robert Oppenheimer, the Manhattan Project and the atom bomb and the modern day wetsuit. No? Well you just hold my non-alcoholic cider and watch the ads. In the 1940s, Dr. Robert Oppenheimer, the father of the atomic bomb, recruited a young physicist named Hugh Bradner, Brad, to his friends, onto the Manhattan Project. Bradner was tasked with several different things during the Manhattan Project. Things like helping design the town, the bomb would later obliterate. He was also responsible for designing the mechanism, the trigger mechanism, which detonated the bomb, which obliterated the town that he just designed. Yeah, that was his job. When he wasn't designing weapons of mass destruction and component parts for weapons of mass destruction, Bradner was a keen oceanographer and used to like taking photos under the sea. However, it was freezing cold. And he spoke to the local Navy boys and they'd all told him that the suits that they used, dry suits at the time, were designed to keep the water away from your body, but they didn't keep you very warm. So Bradner set about designing a new type of suit using a material called neoprene, which isn't too far away from rubber. The idea of the neoprene was it would tra trap a layer of water between the skin and the rubber itself, or the neoprene itself, thus creating a layer which could be heated by the body temperature and keep you warm while you're underwater. Thus the idea for the wetsuit was conceived. In 1950, Bradner set about testing his first design, which he called the Submariner, in the middle of winter in Lake Tahoe. And there was ice everywhere, but it was effective. It did the job, kept him warm, so he decided to unleash it to the public. The Submariner was therefore the very first wetsuit as we know it. Some might say the biggest mistake he made was designing trigger mechanisms for atom bombs. Others might say the biggest mistake that he ever made was not getting a patent for his design. Big mistake, Brad. Big mistake. Soon after he'd released the Submariner to the public, King Surfer and entrepreneur Mr. Jack O'Neill jumped on the idea and turned it into the success it is today. So Brad and his career took it from weapons of mass destruction to wetsuits of bass destruction. See how I did that? And there you have it, the modern day wetsuit from the atom bomb. Pfft, who'd have known? You've learned something, I've learned something. If nothing else happens in this video, we can always say that. Chances are you've already had experience in the sea. You might have been surfing, you might have had, but probably I should imagine most of you will have a surf wetsuit. It's known as a closed cell wetsuit, which is a piece of neoprene with um, a layer of fabric on each side. The closed cell wetsuit is durable, it's easy to get on and off, it, they're cheap, um, they're easy to wear, they're comfortable, and they work by trapping a layer of water between yourself and the neoprene itself, and they heat, heat that water up, so you get that anyway. If you've got one of those wetsuits, absolutely try getting in the water with one of those, get your snorkel, get your mask, have a look around. You don't even need fins to start with. Get in amongst the rocks, have a look. If you're starting from absolute basics like I did, literally grab your wetsuit. I have my goal, two, three, so it's two most places, three in the vital part. And this is what I spearfished um, to start with. Of course, when it starts to get cold in the UK, this isn't really gonna cut the mustard. I was in, I'll was probably stay in the water for maybe 45 minutes. My hands were going numb, my feet were, dropping off it was it was awful but to start with at the end of summer this was absolutely spot on basically snorkeling basically snorkeling you just want to start having a little look around have a snorkel see what you can see see if that environment's for you i quickly realized that it was for me and it's i wanted to progress further with it so basically once you've figured out that it is for you and you want to progress from your surf wetsuit into a spear fishing wetsuit. A spear fishing wetsuit is commonly known as a open cell wetsuit. An open cell wetsuit is it's only has one layer of fabric on the outside, it makes it a lot more um, durable if you're rubbing against rocks a little bit, you know, if you catch it on stuff, it's not gonna tear as easily. 
but on the inside there is no piece of material that neoprene will stick to you it becomes your second skin with that said when you're trying on a wetsuit never try one on dry i tried one on dry it did not end well i just literally was stuck i was claustrophobic my arms were stuck in the air my head lube it up it needs to be lubed up <laughs> If you don't lube it up, you're probably not going to get into it, or you'll rip it, or you'll suffocate. It's as simple as that. Once you've got it on for the first time, you might feel a little bit claustrophobic. I know I did. Take some deep breaths, move around a little bit. If you've lubed it up enough, you'll be able to move all the arms, get yourself comfortable, and pretty soon it does feel like a second skin, so you don't need to worry about it. Wetsuits um, do may take a massive jump in cost when you go from a closed cell wetsuit to an open cell wetsuit you're talking hundreds for an open cell wetsuit let that be the first investment you make because it will change the game for you you'll go from wanting to be in the water for about 40 minutes and then freezing your hands are cold and everything to being able to be in the water for hours you get out your hands are still warm because your blood has stayed warm i wear a five mil wetsuit and a seven mil wetsuit well, a seven mil wetsuit when it's icy and freezing and a five mil wetsuit was my re most recent purchase and I'll probably be wearing that all year round if I can get away with it. The thing about the five mil wetsuit is for this particular t model, for this particular type, it comes with Farmer John trousers. Now these Farmer John trousers will go up like a pair of braces, like bib and braces, and it'll cover up your whole midsection. When I've got this on, I've obviously got the jumper down the top, the top half, the jacket has come down, clipped underneath the groin area. That's given me 10 mil across all of my vital organs. That keeps you so much warmer than your surf wetsuit. It's unbelievable. I've gone from maybe half an hour to 45 minutes underwater in the surf wetsuit to the middle of November in the water for three or four hours, easily, without a problem. This wetsuit in particular is a more. I'm not sponsored or anything by anyone, by the way, just so as you know. You can pick these up at the moment at Spearfishing UK. In my opinion, an entry level price, but definitely not an entry level wetsuit. The wetsuit itself is so comfortable. It is literally my second skin. It fits me absolutely perfectly. When I'm talking about the fit of the wetsuit, um, I wouldn't recommend buying a wetsuit on anything like Amazon. You really need to know when it comes to a wetsuit whether or not it's going to fit you properly. And somewhere like Amazon, you can't really find that out. If you buy your wetsuit from a reputable company where you can speak to an actual person, you're going to have a lot more success in picking the right brand because there'll all be different cuts, different sizes, different, slightly different shapes. You'll find the right brand, you'll find the right price, and you're going to get it right a lot easier. The other bonus of a community like Spearfishing Buddies or any other forum or any other Spearfishing community page is that you get to speak to people. Try and find people on there who are the same build as you, the same sort of size as you. Obviously, I'm, what, six foot five, six foot four, and I'm about 85 kilos. So it was easier for me to be able to speak to people who are the same body shape as me, same size as me, and figure out what they've been wearing. So it is an investment. It's a couple hundred quid to start with. You know, you don't want to be chucking a couple hundred quid away when you just start, and I didn't want to. The Moray wetsuit, I can't recommend highly enough. I don't know enough about other wetsuits. It's worth speaking to people again. You know, it's worth having a chat, figuring out what other people do. If you're short, if you're light, if you're heavy, if you're tall, if your legs are long, these are all things that you're gonna to wanna to take into account. So it's definitely worth speaking to somebody. Don't just go straight to someone like Amazon. When it comes to the open cell wetsuit, there is also a smooth skin wetsuit. I don't really want to go too much into smooth skin wetsuits. They are better when it comes to wetsuits in general, but a couple of things you'll find is they're more expensive and they are definitely a lot more fragile. So when you're a beginner, um, if you see that cropping up on um, catalogs and things like that, smooth skin wetsuit, and you think that looks nice, well, it will look nice, but it will also tear like paper. Just be aware, The if you do need to know more about that, by the way, the smooth skin wetsuit, Daniel Mann has got a fantastic video on the smooth skin wetsuits where he does goes into the whole um, thermal imaging camera stuff. It's, it's brilliant, it's good. But I think he also says on there that if you're a beginner, then an open cell wetsuit is for you because you're not gonna be in and out of the water. You're not gonna be on boats, you're not. But if you do wanna know more about smooth skin wetsuits, go and have a look at Daniel Mann's channel. I'll put some kind of, I'll try and put a link up. If I don't, it's Daniel Mann. 
as well as going over to places like Spearfish and Bodies, trying to get information from people there. Um, another good way that I found to get absolutely brilliant information, excellent technical information, beginners tips and things like that, is to listen to podcasts, watch people's videos on YouTube, that sort of thing. You can get really good advice for beginners on there. Um, I've recently listened to um, the UK Spearfishing podcast uh, with Matt Coombe. Um, I can't recommend that highly enough. I'll try and get a link up as well if I can figure out how to do that. Um, the guest that he's had on there, he's asked all of them, what advice would you give to a beginner, beginners in spearfishing? And all of them have given a different answer. And all of them have been pretty good, actually. I've been quite into it. It's good. And that I found invaluable. I, I took a lot away from that. So, yeah, podcasts, videos, speak to people, spearfishing buddies, get onto all of these people, ask questions, get involved, read people's testimonials, read people's stories, read what, look at people's pictures. It's it's all there to learn. If you found this video, then there's no question in my mind that you would have found Joe PK's, your Daniel Mann's, um, your Kev Daly's, your Spear Fins. Um, there's, there's so many of them. There's so many spear fishing, uh, chat, like decent, decent spear fishing, uh, fish, spear fishing channels. Can't recommend it enough. Best, best, best advice is to get advice. Just keep sucking it up like a sponge, like a sea sponge. <laughs> And it's good. It's good fun. I like it. So, yeah. Hope you've learned something here. That would be nice. If you haven't. Well, who would have thought that you could have got from Dr. Robert Oppenheimer all the way to the modern day wetsuit? So, you're welcome. <laughs>